rather just have like it keep it simple stupid or it's a sim keep it stupid simple <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to Live, Love, Life, and Travel. This is your girl Shamika. Today I want to talk about minimalism. Did I say it right? Minim minimalism? Yeah. Being a minimalist. You probably have seen this word kind of floating around a little bit. I think it's sort of becoming a trend or it's becoming trendy. But I wanted to talk about what it means to be a min minimalist. Oh my god, try to say that word five times. Back. Like minimalist, 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 minimalist. <laughs> anyway, um, so I think being, I think people in general are starting to sort of wake up to the sort of the way the Western culture has been sort of running for the last few centuries and deciding that it doesn't work anymore. There's a whole idea that you need more and more and more to be happy, to be fulfilled, to be to be wanted, to be desired, to be on a higher platform in society is sort of, people are sort of waking up to that lie and saying that doesn't work for them and it actually doesn't make them happy, it doesn't make them feel good whatsoever. And I, I love this movement. I, I don't think like everybody has to be the same caliber of minimalist, minimalist, oh my gosh, minimalist. I don't think everybody has to be on the same level. I don't think it necessarily means that you have to only have like three shirts and one pair of pants and one pair of shoes and that's it. And some people do have that and they're perfectly fine with that. But I think it really means just realizing I don't have to have like this season's bag or shoe or purse or I don't need to have these pair of jeans because it doesn't really actually satisfy me. It's a facade. It's a facade that it satisfies you. It's, it's, I'm not gonna say that having nice things is a bad thing, because it's not. Having things, have, needing things to validate yourself, needing material possessions to feel good about yourself, to feel happy, that is a really dangerous uh, rope to stand on. And I think it's we've been going that way for a really long time. I've actually saw a documentary, and if I can find it, I'll put it up on the um, screen, or I'll put it in the, the link below. <clears throat> and it was talking about, the, actually the corruptness in the fashion industry when it comes to just producing clothes in general. That back in the 50s or 40s or 30s or 60s or whatever, we used to just had winter, spring, fall collections. That's all you had. That was the fashion. You had winter fashion, you had spring fashion, you had summer fashion. But now it's becoming like these mini seasons where through in just spring you need to have four different <clears throat> genres of fashion, you know. and. Um, and, it beca and also because the clothes are getting a lot cheaper, you have H&M, you have Forever 21. Um, and so because the ch clothes are getting cheaper, that means whoever's making these clothes are getting paid less. And so, uh, you know, they have these pretty much these factory farms in India and other uh, poor or third world countries where people are being underpaid, being extremely mistreated. Um, the work conditions are horrible and even their children who are working in these factories and I know some countries are different than other countries and some countries children working is just an acceptable thing and unfortunately not to judge but you know um, you know I think some years ago there was even that collapse of a, uh, a clothing factory or sweatshop basically in India and then it was another one right after that the people had died to make you a shirt, to make you a pair of pants that you don't fucking need because you got 30 pairs of pants and 20 shirts already. Like, you don't need those things. You know, back in the day, people bought items that, you know, was investment items, like that good jacket and those really good pair of shoes and that really that dress and you just wore that dress all the time to every every nice occasion and it wasn't a big deal back then no one was like oh my gosh she's wearing that same dress again she must be poor or something like everybody kind of did that because you bought pieces that last you bought really well-made pieces that just last you for years now it's just these throwaway pieces people like buy a shirt it gets ripped in it two weeks later and you go buy another shirt and so and so it's that I think mem the, mem the minimalist movement is about Realizing that your worth and your value is not attached to material possessions, that you don't need those things to be happy, but it's also to sort of be more conscious and more aware of where you're getting your stuff and what, how your actions affect the rest of the world. By me constantly going to these places that have these sweatshops in other countries, 
you know, I'm in some way effectively got blood on my hands, so to, speak, so to speak. And I'm not saying everyone has to be an activist. I'm not saying everybody has to be Mother Teresa. I'm not saying that. I'm just sort of explaining why people are starting to sort of switch out to wanting less things than the opposite of wanting more. I mean, we come from a world where it's just more, 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 more. And for me, I've always sort of been a minimalist. Am I saying that right? Um, I've always been that way. I, and I think maybe it comes from me. I was a tomboy for a lot of part of my young adulthood, and so I never got the whole one in 10 pairs of shoes and 30 purses and 20 watches. I never got that. For me, having that much stuff is adds to me having to make choices on a daily basis that I don't want to have to make. It's like, now I got to figure out what pair of shoes matches what purse, which outfit, what jewelry to wear. Like, that's just too much for me. I'd rather just have, like, it. keep it simple, stupid, or it's a Sim keep it stupid simple. I don't know. K keep it simple. You know what I mean? Like I got my gym shoes. I got probably a pair. when I'm back at LA. I don't have high heels now. When I'm back, when I was living in LA, I had a gym shoes. I had a pair of heels and had like maybe some flip flops or something. And that was it. That's all I needed. I didn't understand needing more. The jewelry that I own is usually the jewelry that I have on my body. I usually have one main purse that I wear and maybe like one backup purse. So I never really got that. And of course, when I was living in LA and I had an apartment, I did accumulate things just like everybody else did. But I made it a very, like it was always a part of my practice. Every time I moved somewhere, I would always declutter my stuff. I would always get rid of a bunch of stuff. And I even do that in while I'm traveling. I think my computer is crooked. If my computer is crooked, I'm sorry. Um, while I'm traveling, uh, every time I go to a new country, I declutter, I just get rid of stuff. And I've always been that way, and I think it's because my grandfather was a um, hoarder, and my mother was kind of a little bit of a hoarder, but she hoarded like paperwork. She had like drawers of paperwork. Like she was all like, and I kind of got that a little bit from her, where it was like, you never know we're gonna need a document, so you just hold on to all of it. And so I made that a practice that once I became an adult, so I would never hold on to shit that I need but even then I still had a collection of things and when I decided to move to start traveling through Thailand I realized like I can travel with all this stuff so I literally got rid of probably 90% of my my belongings I sold all my furniture and all my all that stuff and then all the rest of the stuff like some homeless person is really happy because I had like tons of stuff to sit in the alley I set it there like just for someone to have. I even had like a little jar of some good nuggets in there, some nip, you know what I mean? And I just like left it there for someone else to enjoy. I wasn't gonna bring it with me. But even then, and I, and I think I left, so I gave away 90% and sold some of that. And I think 5% I gave to a friend to hold on to. And then I, the rest I took with me. But even then, I had, when I first started traveling, I had like a big ass giant fucking suitcase. And then I had another bag and like another bag. And within the first month of me traveling, I got rid of that suitcase and I got I left all that stuff just there and it was just easy to leave it it was like it's just clothes and if I need something else I can always buy it so I never really held on to material possessions like that like for me it's not a big deal like if I have a shirt and I really like it and it gets a little ripped in oh that sucks but it's just a fucking shirt like who cares like I never was like that so me like I kind of I've always sort of had that mindset, I think, and I, it was just no word for it. And also me traveling, I just sort of fell into being a mim minimalist. Ugh. Um, so right now, like, and I'll probably do another video showing you exactly what I have. And you know, I've seen those videos, like how, how does it, what kind of, how much clothes do a minimalist have and stuff like that. And so I have just one duffel bag and a backpack, and that is it. That's all I have. That is all my material possessions. And if you guys notice, if you watch my videos on a regular basis, you will see I'm wearing the same shit all the time. And I try to switch it up, but like, you know, sometimes you just get. And so, and I'm totally fine with that. I do need to like spruce up my uh, my wardrobe. I need to get rid of some stuff and buy some stuff because I always get rid of and then buy. And when you're traveling, you don't necessarily throw everything away. You actually just leave it behind for the next traveler they might need a pair of shoes or they may need a shirt so it's just sort of giving back to the next person so I really like that so yeah and I don't necessarily think like I know people it's nothing wrong with being into fashion it's nothing wrong with liking and wanting to feel comfortable in what you're wearing and to have sort of a sort of a, a fashion sense in a way I still think you can be that way and still be a minimalist what I recommend if you're thinking about that 
or what I do for myself is I just buy clothes I know I'm gonna feel comfortable in. I know that I'm gonna like. I like a lot of button downs. I think button downs look good on me and they're really comfortable and so that's why you see me wear them a lot. So I just buy stuff that I know I'm gonna like and I just, you know, wear the fuck out of it until it falls off of me. So I think that's the point of being a minimalist. I think it is kind of a trend and some people are just sort of doing it as a trend or maybe just for views or whatever. But I I am I love this movement because I do think people need to stop like buying so much shit and and I'm not saying that I'm the most cautious or conscious person when it comes to buying stuff um, but just know the cheaper the clothes that you're buying and the quicker the turnaround is it's probably not good for the person on the other end so that's it guys that's my little talk about being a minimalist I'll continue this conversation as throughout my YouTube career um, so that's it if you have any comments about being a minimalist if you're thinking about becoming a minimalist if I'm not saying this right uh, please feel free to comment below uh, if you want to like this video please like it if you want to share this video please share it guys it really does help and if you want to continue to follow my journey on this crazy game called life please subscribe and thank you thank you thank you from live love life and travel well, the promise of globalization was that it was going to be a win-win, that consumers in the rich world would get cheaper goods and people in the poorer parts of the world would get jobs and that those jobs would give them an opportunity to work their way out of poverty. This enormous, rapacious industry that is generating so much profit, why is it that it is unable to support millions of its workers properly? The actual business model is completely unsustainable. Unless you change that model, you can't change anything. When everything is concentrated on making profits, what you see is that human rights, the environment, workers' rights get lost. My God, we can do better than this.